Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in statics and we're going to do problem 745. Okay, so in this part of the book right now uh, we're changing from finding the internal forces to start drawing the shear and moment diagrams of these beams. Now, in order to find the shear and the moment diagrams of these uh, problems, I'm, not, I'm going to use a different uh, method compared to that book. Okay, so the book likes to separate the beam into sections and then creating the summatory of forces in the y direction for the shear and then the summatory of moments for the moments diagram. And the method that we're going to use, it's a little different. So the first thing that we have to do is that we're going to simplify our beam with the reaction forces as much as we can, okay? So let's just start by uh, reading the question. So it says draw the shear and moment diagrams for the shaft and question A is in terms of the param parameters shown. Question B set P as 9 kilonewtons, A equals to 2 meters, L equal to 6 meters. There is a thrust bear bearing at A and a journal bearing at B. Okay, so let's draw our free body diagram. So we're going to have FBD our system and I will have a system like this where I will have at my reaction at A since this is a thrust bearing I will have a uh, reaction force in the y direction and also a reaction force in the x direction okay so I'll have a y I'll have a x and then at B, I have a journal bearing, so I'll have a reaction force in the y direction only. Okay? Now, I also have my load P, so let's draw it over here, my load P. And we're told that the distance from my point A to my load P is equal to 2, I'm sorry, is equal to A, because we need to leave it in variable form for our question A. And then the entire beam has a length of L, okay? So now that we have our free body diagram, we can start applying the summatory of forces in the X direction. Going to the right is positive. And what do I have? Well, I will have AX going to my right, and then I have nothing else. Therefore, this should be equal to zero. Then I can apply the summatory of forces in the y direction, assuming that going up is positive, what do I have? Well, we have positive AY, and then we also have positive BY minus my load P should be equal to zero. Okay? From here, what we can conclude is that AY plus BY, so my two reaction forces, should be equal to my load P. Okay? Which makes sense. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply the sum material moments. Okay, going counterclockwise is positive. And then I'm going to do it around my point B. So we don't have to worry about this point to this reaction force anymore. So I'm holding here my force P will want to rotate me counterclockwise. So I'll have positive P. And what is the distance with, with respect to my point B? So here to here. Well, will be this amount. This amount will be L minus A. Okay, so it will be L minus A. Then AY, it's in the opposite direction, therefore we'll have a clockwise direction, moment direction. So I'll have negative AY multiplied by the distance, the total distance is L, and all this should be equal to zero. Okay, and so after we have this, we can start solving for AY in terms of P. So we'll have AY, it's equal to what? Well, if we move this entire thing to the other side, we'll become positive and we will divide everything by L. So we will have P multiplied by L over uh, minus A, all divided by L. If we clean this up a little bit, we will end up having 1 minus A over L 
multiplied by p okay so i'm just distributing this l to here and to here leaving the p outside now that we know a y we can also solve for b y and we will find out that b y will be just equal to p minus a y well a y is so we'll have minus 1 minus a over l of p since a y is equal to all this okay if we simplify this we do a common factor of, uh, of p's i will have 1 minus 1 minus a over l we close the big bracket multiply by p okay we can oversimplify this by breaking this negative here and distribute it to here and here. So we'll end up having 1 minus 1 plus a over l multiplied by p. We will end up knowing that by has to be equal to what? Well, 1 minus 1 cancel out with 0 and we will end up with a over l multiplied by p. Okay? Now that we know these two guys, we can take our free body diagram and as I said before, our main goal was to simplify our free body diagram for a simplified one. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to call it simplify FBD. Okay? Now how do I simplify this? Well, AX is equal to zero, so I'm just going to delete it, okay? AY, we realize that is equal to one. So let's change our value for AY. It's one minus AL times P. And BY is just equal to A over L multiplied by P. Okay, so this is our beam and in order to do what the question is actually asking about our uh, cheer diagram and our moment diagram so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do um, these guidelines so I'm going to do these guidelines in here another guideline at the end of the beam and what will I have well I'm going to create a shear diagram that is going to look like this. So this is my shear, okay? And what will I have? Well, if we pay attention in here, I'm going up this amount of force, which is P multiplied by this number. Now, this number is just one minus a fraction, okay? So minus a decimal. So I'm going to go up one minus a fraction. Let's say it's there. We don't know how much it is. And then the it's going to stop exactly at this location where I'm going to draw right now. That is here where P is applied. And what we will have next is that we will have that this is going to go below the line. Why do I know that it, this is going to go below the line? Because we have in here one minus a decimal point. So we have basically below one multiplied by p. Therefore, if I subtract, I go down p quantity, then I should go below my zero line. Okay. So just to make sure this is my zero line. And then the other important aspect that I have is that I'm going to go up by this amount okay how much will that amount be well it will be exactly the amount to return my shear diagram to zero so always remember for the shear diagrams you are going to start at zero and you're going to end up at zero so that's how much I know that this amount will be in my diagram Okay, so basically we can say that if we go, we went up one minus a over l times p, and then we went down to negative a over l p. Okay, so that's our cheer diagram. Now the moment diagram, we can draw it the same way. 
So in here we'll have moment. Okay. Now, same as in the shear, we start in zero and we have to end up at zero. Now for the moment diagram, I will go from here. And since my area of my shear diagram in here is positive, I have to have a positive slope. Now, the moment diagram, the key part is that the moment diagram is the integral of the shear, okay? So if I have do the integral of a constant, I will end up with a line. Since this constant is positive, then I will have a positive slope, okay? So that's my slope. And then guess what? For this side of my shear diagram is negative. So I'll have a negative slope. And where do I know it ends? Does it end here, here, here? Well, it will end up in here. Remember, always will start at zero, end up at zero. So this is my shear. This is my moment diagram, I'm sorry. Okay, now, what is the important aspect of this moment diagram? Is this peak in here, where the moment is the biggest. Where, what is that moment? Well, that moment is this total area of this square. And how do we know what's that amount? Well, that amount will be its height multiplied by its base, okay? So its height is this amount of load. And its base, as we can see here, it's A. So we're going to say that this is going to be one minus A over L times P times the distance, which is A itself, okay? So this will answer my question A. And for my question B, all they're saying is, okay, you're going to draw the shear, a moment diagram again, but you're going to use this parameter. So let's go and find out again, which parameters they are. So over here, we want P, we want A and L. So we have P equal to nine kilonewtons, A equal to two meters, and L equals to six meters, okay? So let's take these parameters and use them for my question B. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them here in the corner and we're going to apply the same thing that we did for my question A to question B. And then we're gonna have our simplified free body diagram. Nothing changes. What changes is just the values. So P, we're told to be nine kilonewtons. Okay, now if we plug into our calculator, what all these values are, so A over L, so we have two over six, that will give me one third. Minus, uh, so we have one minus one third, that will give me two thirds, multiplied by P, which is nine. So we got two times nine, that will give me 18 divided by three, that will give me six, okay? So we got that this is equal to six kilonewtons. So I'm gonna put it equal to six kilonewtons. And since six kilonewtons are going up, in order to maintain equilibrium, this guy has to be going up three kilonewtons, okay? So now we know these values. We can erase basically this, leave the six kilonewtons. Okay, same goes in here. We're going to say that this is six kilonewtons mark. This is my shear diagram. And then over here, we'll have three kilonewtons at the bottom. So we have three kilonewtons. Okay, now in here, this equation, we know that this is equal to six kilonewtons multiply by my distance A, which is two meters, will end up with a maximum moment of 12 kilonewtons per meter, okay? So we can erase this, okay? And leave my 12 kilonewtons per meter in here, okay? So this is all for this video, guys. If you guys like the video, push the like button, subscribe, and please let me know if you have any questions and we'll be really glad to help you.